Oh, that, uh, thanks for staying with us. What am I doing? I'm just fiddling here. Uh, it's still the breakfast on Plus TV Africa. And like we said, we're going to come back to uh, the Dangote and NNPCL saga. And joining us uh, to discuss uh, this is Mr. Nick Agule, who is also eventually an expert in the oil industry. Good morning and welcome to the program, sir. Good morning. Uh, good morning to all our viewers globally. Yeah. Good morning. Thank you for joining us. Uh, the news is that Nigeria National Petroleum Company Limited has released a new breakdown of the estimated petrol price sourced from the Dangote refinery set for sale at its retail stations nationwide. And NPCL confirmed it is paying Dangote refinery in U.S. dollars for the September 2024 petrol offtake uh, with Naira-based transactions commencing on October 1, 2024. The latest breakdown showed changes in fees, including a midstream and downstream regulatory authority fee of 4.495 Naira, with charges like inspection and margin fees removed, and a revised distribution fee of 42.45 Naira. NNPCL assured Nigerians that any discount from Dangote refinery will be fully passed on to the public. We're just not making sense. The relationship, this marriage between NNPCL and Dangote Refinery, uh, is it that NNPCL is owning part of Dangote Refinery or the federal government is owning part of Dangote Refinery? Why does it have to depend uh, one on the other before we can see what, is, what, is, uh, what the price is, first of all, and we can even see any news coming from that? Just tell us what you think about this Dangote and NNPCL marriage, as, as I would put it. Thank you very much. A marriage indeed. Mm -hmm. uh, we, to be honest, we can see that there is a lot that is not being told to Nigerians. Uh, it started with uh, the NNPC saying they took 20% stake in Dangote refinery, and then Dangote comes out to refute that and say, no, you only paid for 7% stake, and the rest you didn't pay for, we are even about to sell it out. But then the NNPC had said previously that they, they collected a loan, uh, I think about $3 billion, if I remember the yeah. numbers very well. They took this loan to go and pay for the 20% share in Dangote Refinery. Now, as it came out to show that Dangote Refinery refuted this allegation, nobody in government circles has asked the question, if this loan of $3 billion was taken to take a 20% stake in Dangote Refinery, but we ended up paying for only a 7% stake, what happened to the balance of the money? That question has not been asked. Neither has it been answered by anybody. And then when Dangote Refinery now announced that he was going to commence the production of uh, premium auto spirit, popularly known as Petro, a lot of shenanigans started to happen. You know, suddenly the executive uh, secretary of the Nigerian Midstream and Downstream Petroleum Regulatory Authority who are the regulator of the downstream uh, uh, business in Nigeria, came out, if I want to use uh, an uncouth language, say running his mouth, condemning Dangote Refinery has not uh, been licensed yet, and the product has been substandard, you know, fit for purpose. And Dangote Refinery has to fight back by saying that, look, what you guys are blending in mortar and bringing to us is, is even worse for the engines in Nigeria. And Dangote goes ahead to open his lab to the whole world to say, come and look at my lab, look at the quality of my products and all of that. And then that led to meetings and all of that. And then we now, probably, they had a compromise within themselves Perhaps to say, why are we fighting each other when we can just agree and, uh, and just go ahead and uh, deal with Nigerians as they have been dealing with us? And then they come up with this agreement and say, oh, uh, only Dangote 
I mean, only the NMPCL is going to buy petrol from Dangote refinery for the Nigerian market. Who makes such a decision? Then that, that one was not enough. The next thing is the NMPC now says Dangote refinery is selling petrol to us at 898 naira a liter. Already priming Nigerians to sell the products to us at over a thousand because they will say, oh, we've added the uh, logistics and all of that to it. And Dangote refinery comes out to say, that's not correct. We are not selling petrol to you at that price. But strangely, Dangote Refinery as a business has never come out to tell us who are the consumers of his products, how much he's selling his products. Yes, he told us, even in the press release, that they refuted NNPC's um, allegation that they were, they were buying petrol from Dangote Refinery at 898 Naira. Dangote Refinery did not set the record straight in that press release by naming exactly how much is petrol. And then the next thing is that we have all sorts of Nigerians, both on social media and on television stations, they've carried their calculators and have become emergency oil economics. <laughs> by just saying, okay, there's 159 uh, uh, liters in a the barrel. Therefore, if you multiply crude oil price by so-so dollar, then you divide by one fifth. This is how much Dangote is producing his petrol. We have decided to, to work for Dangote refining for free. The man who is producing the petrol has not even told us what it costs him to produce the petrol, how much he wants to sell it. And it is analysts sitting on television stations and on social media who are now punching calculator 159 liters, not knowing that. There is so much in a barrel beyond 159 liters. People don't understand that in that barrel, there is what we call non-associated gas that comes with it. And that is the gas that the refinery is using to power itself, to generate electricity for itself. Electricity that if it's too much for the refinery, they will not sell to the neighboring community. People don't understand that things like bitumen, which is used in making roads come out of that barrel. There's so much that comes out of that barrel. So I would just advise this emergency petroleum economics to give us a break. Stop camp up, punching your calculator and saying, oh, there's no way Dangote will sell his petrol for less than 1,000 or so and so and so forth. You know, allow Dangote refinery to come up to us clean. Can you still hear How us? much is costing him? And we can benchmark that with the refineries elsewhere in the world and tell him whether he's giving us a good deal or not. So this is just a strange uh, occurrence. But all that is looking here is that the NMPC, who has been importing petrol 100% for Nigeria, does not want to leave that business to anybody else. Mm. They want to continue to be the only organization that deals with petrol for all of Nigeria. And for me, that's where President Tinubu needs to show leadership. Just get the NMPC off our back. Let them go and fix their refineries. Let them fix their refineries. And let Dangote come to Nigerians as a business. We buy Dangote uh, cement. We, we buy Dangote diesel. We buy Dangote food, food stuff and all of that. Why is petrol now so different that the NMPC will now muzzle Dangote refinery that they cannot even open their mouth and tell us how much they are selling their petrol? So would you say that, you know, Dangote Refinery is in transparent as well, um, just like the NNPCL? Dangote Refinery is not being transparent. If they, were, if, if they were being transparent, immediately they issued a press release to say that this is not the amount we're selling petrol to NNPCL as claimed by them. They would have put the, the, the price that they are selling petrol to to the NMPCL so that we, who are the consumers, who are eventually going to pay the money. Remember, it's not the NMPCL that is going to pay this money. The money is eventually going to come from us, who are the consumers. Okay. He should have come clean to us to say, this is how much I am selling my petrol. And he didn't do that.
It means oh, there's some kind of relationship that we do not understand. It means that there's, there are some compromises that we do not understand. Mm. It means there are some intricacies that we do not understand. And this is what worries Nigerians and all that. Uh, but um, now they're talking about starting the Naira seal of this uh, oil in, in October. Now they're selling in dollars. What marked difference will that bring to us? So, if Dangote refinery will be sold petrol in Naira, there will still have to be a conversion rate to say, because we know that this crude oil is produced and sold in dollars. So, if the NNPCL decides that I will sell my in Naira. There will still have to be a conversion rate. At what rate are we going to convert the dollar price? Because the last time I checked, there is no recognized Naira price for a barrel of crude oil. So there has to be a conversion rate of the dollar to the Naira and say, pay me Naira for what I'm giving to you. You know, the advantage or the immediate advantage of that is that Dangote refinery doesn't have to go and chase the dollar to get dollar to pay NMPCL. So it will help our exchange rate. It will help the Naira. Because the, 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 the moment you are using a lot of Naira to go and look for dollar, you are helping the dollar. You are making the dollar to be stronger because the demand for the dollar is high. And simple economy says, the higher the demand for a product, the higher the price. So if Dangote now doesn't need to carry Naira to go and chase the dollar, the immediate impact is our Naira will be helped. Then secondly, given that exchange rate that they have used to convert the dollar price to the Naira and Dangote pays, when Dangote produces petrol with that crude, we expect that it should be the same Naira rate that they should use to convert whatever Dangote's product is, so that it will now become a reprieve to Nigerians with a lower price of the petrol. So it is an arrangement whereby Nigerians' crude will be fed into Dangote refinery and the, and the products will be brought up for Nigerian use, and there will be a lot of liberty for I, I the NSCA. Sorry, sorry for cutting you, sorry for cutting you uh, Mr. Nick, um, Mr. Agule. I don't see, maybe in my layman's eyes, I don't see how that is a difference because if it is 1,500 naira, for instance, to a dollar, Dangote being sold uh, this crude for naira will still be buying uh, one. Well, uh, 1,500 naira that would have been a dollar. The only difference is that it's, he's not going to source for it, so it's going to help our naira and all that. But how is it going to help him to make the thing cheaper? Because he's spending the same amount of money to buy the fuel that he could have spent if he were buying in dollars. That's where I want you to explain more. So, so exactly. So this is what I'm talking about, conversion rates. It is in the conversion rate that the opportunity presents for both Dangote Refinery and the NNPCL to do a deal that will be more beneficial to Nigerians in terms of the pricing. So if, for instance, they decide that they are going to go on the conversion rate of, say, 1,200 Naira, pay me 1,200 Naira per, 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 I mean, uh, per dollar of a barrel. That means when the products are produced, the conversion rate should be the same 1,200 Naira before they go into the market. So it will help Nigerians because here we are talking about a situation where uh, the owner of the crude, which is Nigeria, is also the buyer of the product, which is the petrol that comes off it. So if you have yam, and you are the one that needs pandediam, you can do a deal such that the pandediam is going to be cheaper than what it would have been if it was uh, uh, 
uh, an arms rate transaction. That's the kind of thing that can happen. And it should happen because, look, well, what we're dealing with now is, is catastrophic in, in terms of, you know, I did, I did a chat yesterday. I did a chat yesterday, which I put out on social media. Mm. The NMPCL decided to go and do a price chat where they said, oh, we're, we're buying uh, petrol at 55 cents a liter. And then they used 1,637 naira, which is the highest exchange rate ever you can think about, not even the CBA rate, you know, to convert it so that they wanted to make the naira as high as possible. And then they put in all sorts of charges, all in a bid to justify themselves that they were buying petrol at high rates from Dangote refinery. And when that thing came out, I did a chat to say, first and foremost, the whole thing that is happening here is the exchange rate. I, I redid that same chart with the exchange rate on the 26th of May, 2023, which was the last working day before this current administration took power on Monday, 29th of May. The exchange rate, the average exchange rate was 460 naira. And if you use that same NMPC template, at 460 naira, the fuel cost came down to 200 and I think 37 naira. 67. Less, I mean, I think 267 or something. Yeah. yeah. Less than less than 300. You know, so you cannot see that it is not even the cost of the crew that is the issue. The issue here is that our naira has been allowed to to deteriorate. To 1,600, and the government that allowed it to happen is the one that needs to correct it. You know, that 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 is the first thing. The second thing that people are not understanding is that if NMPCL is now using plats, plats, which is the, the the price for products globally, to multiply to market exchange rate. And tell Nigerians that this is what you are going to pay. Let us not forget that in the UK where I'm sitting now, it is that plat that people are using to pay for petrol. In the United States, it is that plat that people are using to pay for petrol. So if you now want us to pay for petrol or plat, are you paying wages like in the UK and in the US? Because you are now put Nigerians to go to the same market with workers in the UK and in the US, but look at the wage difference. We're talking about 70,000 minimum wage, of which a majority of states have not even started to pay. It is scandalous that as we speak today, do you know that some states did not even upgrade their minimum wage to 18,000? I mean, sorry, to 30,000. Some states are still paying 18,000. They didn't even make it to 30,000 before we put this 70,000. Whereas a minimum wage worker who is also buying uh, uh, petrol at Platts here in the UK is on 2,000 pounds minimum wage. How much is that in Naira? Is that over 4 million? So the man that is earning 4 million Naira a month minimum is buying petrol at Platts. Then the man who is earning 70,000, wow. the NMPC say go and buy petrol at Platts. Yes, Does it make sense? Does it make sense? Yeah, How much really are they going to throw Nigeria under the bus? Yeah. You know, of suffering. I feel yeah, like I just, it has a it, it has an adverse effect, um, a negative impact on the people, and the people who are even getting the brunt of it are the consumers, are Nigerians, you know, people who need to buy this product every day. But some other thing that has been said um, by marketers is um, Dangote is trying to have a monopoly with the petroleum sector. And I was just reading your analysis where you were talking about the four refineries, why they're not working and how they need to start working to have a competitive advantage and a fair deal. Can you just let us know how important this is and how, you know, we're going to have that economies of scale if we have our four refineries working, maybe not even all the four, but if we can refine our own product and have it, are we going to have a competitive advantage over Dangote, um, whatever price is giving us at the moment? You know that 
I don't know if it's the Minister of State for Petroleum, the NNPCL. Mm. They put out this statement to say, oh, Nigerians will have to buy petrol at market determined prices. And I say, which market? A market that is only one Dangote refinery that is inside. Mm -hmm. You know, this is an anomaly. When you talk about a market determined rate, you're talking about a fully competitive market. If the market is not competitive, then the pricing can never be fair to the consumers. You know? So, what Nigeria needs to do urgently is to provide competition to Dangote Refinery. And the quickest way we can provide competition to Dangote Refineries is to fix our four refineries. And President Tinibu, I'm so surprised that he shows so much patience with the NMPC. President Tinibu, whilst he was out of office, he was not yet a president. He knew that the NNPC had not done anything with our refineries for upwards of 20 years. So it was expected that immediately he came into office, and especially that he's an oil industry man. He should have seen through the emptiness of NNPC as far as our refineries are concerned. And he should have taken decisive action. Like I said, at Eagle Square, where he made the statement, fuel subsidy is gone, which was going to bring hardship on Nigerians. Immediately he got to his office, he should have now started to deal with the refineries, which was now supposed to ameliorate the suffering made by that statement of fuel subsidy is gone. You know, because if we have our four refineries working, remember that as we speak today, Dangote just sank $20 billion into Lekki to build a refinery. In every uh, price, in, in the price of every liter of product that Dangote is producing, a share of that $20 billion is inside because he has to recover his investment. You know, whereas for our four refineries, the entire investment that was put in them has already been recovered. So the pricing of products coming off from our refinery will not have that capital recoup re re recouping of investment. That is number one. Number two, we are already paying staff at these refineries. We are paying staff. Because remember that in Dangote refinery now, the, the cost of the, a, a liter of petrol includes the staff cost is paying to workers. But for us, we have been paying these workers who have been refining zero barrels. So now, if they are refining, we are not going to uh, 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 you know, take additional costs. We are just going to be getting value out of the salaries we have been paying them already. So it is expected that the, the petrol that will come off, uh, the petroleum products generally that will come off the NPC uh, run refineries now, or let me call them our refineries, because NPC doesn't own them. The, the petroleum products that will come off our refineries will be cheaper, quite cheaper than Dangote's products. And if we supply our market with cheap products, Dangote can face the international market. All these West African countries and then Central Africa that the Minister of uh, Finance said our petrol is going to. Dan Gote can be supplying them with his own products and generating foreign exchange for the Nigerian economy. So the market is there that our refineries have not worked, four refineries, and President Tinibu has been more than a year in office and he hasn't done anything about the refineries, doesn't show that he's ready to help Nigerians come off this high cost of uh, petroleum products that we are suffering from. But it doesn't look like NNPC is trying at all, is, is willing at all to to make Nigerians uh, even smile because they are the ones that are making it look like it is supposed to be very, very high. Even when Dangote is saying that uh, they didn't sell at a particular price to them, Dangote, according to your calculation, has inflated the price so that uh, Nigerians will think that they are paying so much, spending so much, and then we need to pay so much to get the fuel. I don't know how uh, we can get Dan um, uh, NNPCL. To, to reason in the way that you're thinking that it should reason. But when you were talking about market, that um, the market should determine the prices and there's no market in Nigeria, there's also a headline on the paper this morning that said that uh, marketers are mulling the idea of uh, importing fuel because 
it seems as if the price for fuel uh, buying from Dangote might even be higher than the one that uh, if they import. So will importation of fuel by independent marketers be the kind of market that will regulate the price or bring back or compete with the Dangote uh, pricing um, policy? I have, I have heard that analysis. I also saw a news clip on that. Now, the, the point here is this. Let us, uh, it, it's just that the data is, is shrouded in, in mystery, in, in secrecy. Otherwise, you remember that before Dangote Refinery uh, came on board, there was this last uh, hike in petroleum, uh, in, in the cost of petrol, by the NNPCA, such that people are now buying like 960 like I, I, we run a transportation company, we're, not, we're buying like 960, so we're buying like 960. Now the question is that in that 960, was the NNPCL actually paying subsidy on it? And there is uh, evidence uh, that there could be subsidy because the NNPCL makes us think that they are landing uh, petrol at more than that. So if the 960 were buying is not the actual cost of landing the petrol, but it is cost that NAPC are doing a uh, shortfall with, as they tell us. Then you can see that uh, if you compare that to Dangote uh, refineries uh, petrol cost, they could be at par, for instance. So the, the service there could be a subsidy that is not going to be paid. But you see, if people want to import petrol and come to compete with Dangote refineries products. They should be allowed to do so. That is the kind of thing that is going to help Nigeria. You know, that we allow competition and we let people compete in the market. That is when we say we have a market. A market where there is free entry and free exit of operators and, and the pricing is done independently based on how each person will make a profit. I always cast people's minds back to nitel because it's such a good example you know nitel was the equivalent of our nmpca today they were the only people supplying telephone to nigerians and this is how they came out with all sorts of racketeering and in all the budgetary allocations that they got and the staff that they had across the country they could only supply 500,000 telephone lines to nigerians these lines were in gross shop, uh, uh, in short supply, and the, the, the cost of telephone was therefore very high. Telephone became a, a, a status symbol. If you are not rich, you can never get it. Just like petrol is now a status symbol for only the rich. Mm -hmm. And then the, the United continued giving us press conferences. The Minister of Telecommunications gave, gave, gave up press conferences. You remember, only one press conference, one of them said, if the telephone is not for the poor and all of that. <clears throat> all that has gone down the, the, the drain. How? We unbundle the sector, liberalize the sector, allow proper telecoms operators like the MTS and the ATS and the Globe to come in. They have now invested over a hundred billion dollars into the sector. They have increased the number of telephone lines from the 500,000 to over 200 million active lines today. And because of that, the cost of phone has drastically fallen. And phone is now available to everybody. This is what we need to do in the downstream sector as well. You know, shift the NNPCA aside, give the four refineries to four different operators, let them bring their money and invest, upgrade the refineries, and by the time they push a lot of petroleum products into the market, the price of petrol will fall to the 200 naira range. I have always said this thing. Why is President Tinubu not doing this? Why is he not doing reform in the downstream sector? He says that uh, by, by, by saying fuel subsidy is gone is a reform. No, Mr. President, fuel subsidy is gone is not a reform. It's visiting calamity on Nigeria through high cost of petroleum products. The real reform in the downstream sector is for you to unbundle the sector, to give four refineries to four different operators, allow competition in the market, deal with electricity, because a, a huge quantum of 
the petroleum products today are put inside generators, yeah. not inside motor vehicles. And that is putting a lot of pressure on the market as well. You know, so that is what is called reform. When you make the thing better and deliver more value to Nigerians and not just removing fuel subsidy and throwing us under the bus. It's, it's unfortunate uh, because uh, uh, this NNPC uh, that we're talking about, um, we, we, we saw that when the president made that pronouncement, uh, fuel subsidy is gone. They are the ones who raised the price, even though their, their, their stock was still there. Something, the fuel that they had bought a long time ago was still there, and they were telling us that they, they could still supply us for three months. Even at that, they raised the price so high, mm -hmm. and others followed suit. And, and they've even raised the price yeah. like even more times now. In the past one, two weeks, the price has been increased twice. They don't even have the interest of the people at heart at all. So I, I don't know. I, I, I keep asking this question all the time, the same answer and all that, but we won't get tired of asking this until maybe one day the president hears us asking this question, and also he asks himself. What is the relevance of NNPCL in the Nigerian life right now? The NNPCL, as I said, is one of the biggest problems we have in Nigeria today. It's, it's a headache. As you can see, the shenanigans they have uh, engaged themselves in. Since uh, Dangote announced that uh, he was going to start uh, putting petrol in the market, the NMP, NMPCL have succeeded in putting themselves before Dangote and us. And I cannot imagine this thing happening. You know, because Dangote is meant to be a competitor to the NMPCL. The NMPCL is a company set up by Nigerians, owned by Nigerians, that is expected to be operating in the upstream, midstream, and downstream petroleum sector. They should be competing with Dangote Refinery. So what has now made NMPCA to come and become a, an agent? It, they, it looks as if they are now an agent of Dangote Refinery. Dangote Refinery will produce petrol, give it to their agent. Then their agent will now sell it to Nigerians. And, and, and President Tinubu, who is the minister of petroleum, is watching this thing happen. And we are not yet seeing leadership from him. You know, so at the end of the day, we have been left with an NMPCL that has been cooking us for a long time. <laughs> Remember, when, when the Buhari regime came into office, they just went and opened the, the cupboard of fuel subsidy small, and you saw the dead bodies that were buried there. In terms of the NMPCL saying we brought in ships, with uh, petroleum products into Nigeria, ships that never even existed. Some of the ships never visited the West African coast. Not to talk about betting anywhere in Nigeria. The monies were being paid. This is the company that did all that, do, those kind of things. And this company is still holding us down. For me, I prefer, because there are some people that say, oh, if Dangote refinery sell petrol direct to Nigerians, that we will buy petrol at more than 1,000 naira. That it is because the NPC is there that the NPC will not bring it to less than. For me, if you ask me, President Tinibu should remove the NPC here, let us buy petrol from Dangote at the real cost. Even if it is that 1,000 naira, let us buy, so long as we know that nobody is paying subsidy on petrol again. Because it is that subsidy they use in eating. That subsidy. You know, the, 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 the volume we're talking about, like they, they were talking about, oh, we're going to lift 26 million liters per day. Just in, multiply 5 naira to 26 million. It's more than 100 million. That's the kind of thing we're talking about. So they, don't, they have been eating from this business, and they don't want to let it go. And President Tinibu should just take them out of this business. You know? So, so for me, the president needs to show leadership here. Nigerians are groaning under the yoke of, uh, of uh, these people, and he has to save us. Mm. So, so I just wanted to talk about the numbers a little bit, because you were talking about, you were saying that we keep having to buy this product at Platt's rate, right? So with the Platt's rate, when we've seen so many increase in 
a couple of months, does that mean that the plus rate increases every single time? And meaning that for every single time that it's been increased, we always have to buy it at that current rate. And is there anything the government can do to ensure that we buy this product at a more affordable rate instead of the plats rate? So the, the, the plats will change with a change in the oil price, the mm. crude oil price. Because if crude oil price changes, the price will change. That is why if you go to a, a properly uh, deregulated market, like here in the UK, you discover that the, the, the price of petrol, the liter per liter, keeps changing. Mm. You know, and you can have petrol stations opposite each other, opposite each other, and they'll be carrying different prices. Mm. Probably because of the way either they are managing their efficiencies, their logistics, or the stock that they have in, in, in place, and all of that. I, I saw an analyst, he sat on a major station, I was saying, oh, the UK government subsidizing petrol. I was hitting myself. I said, where is this man coming from? Everybody had just become an emergency petroleum economist. <laughs> the man didn't know that in a, in a liter of petrol we buy here in the UK, about 60% is taxation. Instead of subsidy, the government is taxing the petrol and then using the money to put into public transportation. You know, these are the kind of things the Tinibu government needs to do. Assuming we have public transportation, it, like you are in Lagos, <coughs> assuming there, there are trains, Lagos even have, have trains. Look at the city like Abuja, where people are coming from Guagurada, from, from Cuba, coming from everywhere, yeah, yeah. in their cars and buses. If those workers were taken by trains, those cars will be packed at home. So there will be less pressure on consumption of petroleum products. You know, because one train can carry 2,000 workers to work. Yeah. And if we talk about 2,000 workers, that could probably be like 200, 300, 400 cars off the road. People are going to work and coming. So this analyst sat on uh, TV and said, oh, go to UK. They are spending billions to subsidize uh, 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 petrol. And I said, where is this man coming from? He doesn't know that in the liter of petrol we buy here, 40% is duty, pure duty. Then 20% is VAT. You know? Then the government takes that money, government then uses that money to provide public transportation so that people can just be going to work with trains, with buses, with trams, with ferries, with uh, over, 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 overland trains, with a light rail. Everything is there. So that you then they fix the roads for those who are on the roads, you know. So this is the kind of thing that government needs to do. When you say reform, the reform has to be thorough. It has to be holistic. It has to be. It has, it has to to be able to deliver better results to Nigerians. But the reform, the so-called reforms that the Tinubu government say they have been embarking upon, each of them is bringing more hardship on Nigerians. You say fuel subsidy is gone. It increased petrol prices from less than 200 naira to 1,000 we are talking about now. You hike interest rate, makes the cost of borrowing higher. The manufacturer transfer the cost into our into the price of goods and, and services. You hike uh, electricity tariff. It brings more hardship. With people now, you know, so, and you call this thing reform. These are not reforms, you know. Like electricity, if you want to reform electricity, you know that we are on 3,000 megawatts. That's too small for our economy. So you now unbundle the sector. You uh, attract investment to come in so that we will generate electricity to at least 25,000 megawatts, 50,000 megawatts, and grow to 100,000 megawatts. We have a plan to do that. Because without electricity, like Tony Elumelu told them recently, without electricity, development is impossible. You know, so that that's that's just what we without, without, without affordable I, electricity. Without yeah, affordable I, I electricity. Because word. if you say just electricity, it's people who are on ban A are now fighting for them to be removed from ban A because they can't afford it anymore. Yeah. People who were uh, paying maybe like uh, five thousand naira per flat in the place that they are living are now paying from thirty to forty thousand per flat. You know, they are paying electricity for it's it's crazy. So people are, are 
some houses I go the, to, the reason they remove their, their, the their, their meter in the morning, like, let, it let, off, let yes. anybody not even go and make a mistake and all that. So if light is not affordable, then there's no point having what you cannot buy. And so in Yambu, the electricity is unaffordable because it's not enough. Mm. Remember that when NITE was supplying us only 500,000 active lines, I sold my wife's line for 150,000 naira in Abuja over 20 years ago. Mm -hmm. But now right. that the lines have and increased it's, to it's about 500 200 naira. million, they are they are not cheaper. So if electricity is not 3,000. And it is only from that 3,000 megawatt you want to make enough money to pay all the successor companies in the in the sector. A unit cost of of, of electricity will be so high. If you if you increase that output to 30,000, the unit cost is bound to go down. That's 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 the way it works. And the only way you can increase. The, the, the electricity to 30,000 is if you put in more money, capital expenditure, which we call capex. You must put in capex. The uh, question that makes Let me understand this. Let me just understand this. I've not uh, asked the electricity companies this. How much capex have they put in? Let me understand this, Chris. If they are putting capex, the output should go up. Yeah? I'm just, I'm just trying to understand. Uh, I know we're talking about, um, about uh, fuel and all that, but you're an energy expert and you're touching on electricity as well. Um, the, people don't understand, including myself, because I'm not an expert in that, uh, where we are now talking about producing more electricity so that we'll have more than the 3,000 megawatts that we have in Nigeria. And on the other hand, we also talk about the fact that sometimes electricity is produced so much, but uh, it is not being put into use. Yeah. Uh, people don't Consumers. buy it. The discos or whatever don't buy it. So how does that really work? That we want more electricity, but anytime it is produced even more, uh, we cannot use it and all that. How does that even, uh, did, does it work? And Yangu, you, you are very correct that we're not talking energy matters. Because like we said, Lack of electricity is impacting on even the petroleum sector. Yeah. Because all the diesel and the petrol put into generator would not have been if electricity was there. So let me now tell you something, Nyamgo. Anywhere in Nigeria where you see a generator, from the Abita Pass, my neighbor owned, to the 500 kVA capacity, or you see a solar system, or an inverter or anything, anywhere you see that in Nigeria, that is demand for electricity that is not being met by the public power companies. That's demand for electricity. The people who are installing the generators and the, and the solar system and inverters, is costing them a lot more to do that, the alternative power, than if they were to buy cheap electricity. So... <coughs> You are correct to say that the, the 3,000 megawatts, as miserly uh, as it is, when it is produced, uh, some of the discos don't take it. And you know why they don't take it? Because these discos have not invested money to expand their distribution networks. They don't even have money to buy meters and install for their consumers. They don't even have money to buy transformers. So when they take electricity, the electricity becomes stranded, and they can't sell it. And that is why they refuse to take it. And the reason is because none of these discos has got the money to do electricity business in Nigeria. Go to Corporate Affairs Commission. All of them were incorporated hurriedly when uh, President Jonathan started the, the reforms in the power sector. Mm. These are politicians who just went and took these disco licenses. If there is any one disco in Nigeria, I think there are nine or eleven of them. Can you show me one of them that was already doing power business before they seized the disco license in Nigeria? Not one. It's not like the MTNs who were doing telecoms business before. They had the technical know-how, they had the expertise, they had the technology, they had the money, they could draw on money from other geographies where they were operating. They came to Nigeria and sank over a hundred billion. 
this discourse did not sink Kobo. And that is why there is no difference between them and, NT, uh, and, uh, and NEPA. You can clearly see the difference between MTN and NITA. Can you tell the same difference between a Ikeja distribution company and NEPA? No. So these are the we'll areas that NEPA our anyway. <laughs> the are going to go straight into. Okay. Yeah. Okay. President Tinubu needs to bring reform to the sector and bundle the sector mm -hmm. and hand over the license, disco licenses to more competent okay. and capitalized companies, power operators to come in and help us. All right, All Nick. Right. All right, Nick. Uh, we've talked energy matters, not, right. not just um, uh, petrol. Uh, petrol right now, but um, unbundling is the watchword for all these discussions in the energy sector, whether it's for petrol or um, uh, crude or for uh, uh, for electricity. Like electricity and all that. So it's unbundling that is the major thing. I hope that this president will have the political will to do this. Already, uh, petrol is impacting on a dual election, and mm -hmm. whoever knows how it will be in 2027, we don't know how that will pan out. But our time has run out, uh, um, Nick. We'd like to thank you for coming on the show this morning. Thank you so very much, and have a thank nice you, day. Thank you, sir. You too. Have a nice thank day. Thank you. We've been talking with Nick Agule, an expert in energy matters and a public affairs analyst as well. We're looking at the back and forth in the Dangote refinery and talking a lot of all other things. We digressed a little bit into uh, power as well and it's same old, same old. We were discussing the same thing and the, the people need to sit up, those who govern us need to sit up. And I was worried in his analysis when he said that in UK, a daily wage of a worker can buy 135 liters of yeah. fuel daily wage and then 73 liters can be bought by nigeria who is earning 70,000. it's it's crazy and our people keep saying other places is very costly other places is like this are we also following them in other things that they are doing well mm. this is how much we can go don't give up hope we can also renew our hope one day <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much for being there. My name is Nyamgula Gaji. My name is Brumel Paulson. We'll see you again tomorrow. Have an amazing day.